from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. This very historical, important historical meeting took part in Oxford in 1929, July uh, 17 to July 31, and that meeting, the chairman was of the International Seismic Association, Dr. Eitingon, and the secretary was Anna Freud. This Congress was very important for many aspects, besides the very original papers which were read at the Congress. The most important aspect from the standpoint of analytical, analytical organization was the importance of the executive committee meeting, where difficulties and controversies between the American and the international European Psychoanalytic Association members was discussed and compromise agreement were formed about many aspects of analytical proceedings, training, especially of the analyst. There was a great attendance, a large attendance at the Congress. There were 186 per persons, participants of those 180 were members of the International Cyclonic Association and some the other participants were candidates in training and family members of the analysts. It's also interesting to note that this Congress in Oxford was held at the at a university town which were Congresses previously avoided the site of uh, university towns, except they had a congress in Munich, they had a congress in Budapest, and in Berlin. And they avoided to have the international congress on university, in university towns, because the mistrust and critical attitude of universities to psychoanalysis. At this Congress, the International Training Commission which of the International Psychonic Association, which was, was the second time meeting, the first meeting of that uh, commission was that it ninth, in 21 years previous when the International Psychonic Association was founded. The training commission didn't meet since, and the standing conflict grew about a training analyst, who should train analysts, and who should be trained. Namely, there were people, doctors and non-doctors, who s were seeking analytical training to treat analytic, uh, to analyze or to do psychotherapy, who were not physicians. They usually could not attain it in America because America was against uh, training lay people. In addition, the training aspects analysis were not developed yet. So they went to Europe or to England or to Vienna, had some analysis there, and they came back to America as American citizens and settled here starting analytical practice to which the medical analyst and the medical world or psychiatrist objected very much and what happened was that in the 1920s there was a definite objection voiced by the Academy of Medicine and by the psychiatrist which uh, they objected to the training and told so to A. E. Brill who was the president and the founder so to say of American psychoanalysis and to sees that training or sees lay people doing psychotherapy or psychoanalysis. And that brought the whole problem up again and it was taken up, this whole problem was taken then up 
at the Oxford Congress. This problem about training a lay analyst, a training analysis schema previously to Oxford in Innsbruck at a conference, but there were controversies and not much was accomplished. Here in Oxford this time, the training commission sat down to do something about it and they came to the decision. The training commission uh, and the members, the analysts who took part in that discussion between America and Europe, how to solve the problem of training laypersons or training uh, Americans in Europe took, uh, took part one evening, if I recall well, at the Randolph Hotel in Oxford, where the following people, I do recall, uh, uh, conveyed. Uh, Dr. Uh, Eitingon was the president, Dr. Ferenczi from Budapest, Anna Freud, Princess Bonaparte from Greece, Dr. Jellef, and Dr. Apoisen, who was secretary, incoming secretary of the International, and myself. And they came, after a long discussion, they came to agree on the following procedure, that anybody from America or from other country who comes to Europe uh, to be analyzed, the European analysts won't just accept them because the procedure usually was for training analysis at, at that time. There were no training commissions, there were no education committee, educational committee. Somebody wanted to have analytical training. He simply went to any analyst, member of a society, and asked to be analyzed, was analyzed. Then he was an analyzed psychotherapist. So the decision was, if anybody seeks analysis from America in Europe, then the European analysts won't accept him for training except only if they were really recommended by the uh, uh, societies from America, and that was uh, decided and adhered, adhered up. Uh, after this uh, discussion, uh, everything went peaceful, that was in the midst of the Congress, as I mentioned before, very excellent paper was read, and a fine time was had by everybody, and I think we may just start now to show you those original pioneers which you are eager to see, which you don't know, and many of you don't know, and that's really why we make, remake the picture again. Let's see how history looks in pictures. As, mm -hmm. uh, as I had the opportunity and uh, good luck to photograph them if I Bell Howell, it just came on the market. We are on the transatlantic steamer Paris bound for England. Unexpectedly I met my friend Bert Lewin on deck. He had returned about three years before from his analysis in Berlin. He also was going to the Congress, so we had a lively discussions and uh, a very jolly time on our crossing. This is me in a younger edition. We soon arrived in England where we were driven by the Windsor Castle and saw the changing of the guards on our way to Oxford. Now we are in Oxford. It rained the first day of the meeting, a common occurrence in England. Here is the Congress Hall where our meeting will be held. The tall colleague is Dr. Reed from Cincinnati. Next, Dr. Clarence Obendorf from New York. One of the first arrivals is Dr. Stephen Hollosch from Budapest. And here is Dr. Clarence Obendorf and Dr. Fritz Wittels from Vienna, who had by 1929 settled in New York. Here I am directing them to be less serious. Here is Dr. Smith Eli Jellef from New York and Dr. Max Eitingham from Berlin. Dr. Raymond de Saussure from Paris. This is Dr. Edward Glover from Lund. The old gentleman is Dr. Eder, England's first analyst. This is Dr. Rottenberg from Brooklyn. You see Dr. Shando Ferenczi from Budapest, my own analyst, holding his umbrella open.
Here comes Princess Maria Bonaparte, Princess of Greece, one of the vice presidents of the Congress. She is followed by Dr. Paul Feden. The next pictures were taken at the lunch recess in the garden of the Congress Hall. You see Dr. A. E. Brill, Dr. Smith Eli Jellet to the left with a straw hat. Dr. Clarence Omdorf, Dr. O Otto Fanical, Melanie Klein and Dr. Karen Horney. Behind the lady, unknown, with his hand in his pocket is Dr. Saracen. To her left is Dr. Sweeney. This is Dr. Karen Hornay and Mrs. Alexander. On the left of the screen, you see Dr. Franz Alexander. And now we have Dr. Franz Alexander with Dr. Gregory Zilbaug. Here you see Dr. Lillian Powers, Dr. Holush with Paul Faden is behind Dr. Powers. The white-haired lady with her back to the camera is Dr. Halford. Here is a close-up of Dr. Fidden and Dr. Halford. On the screen left is Dr. Edward Hitchman from Vienna. The lady in the polka dot dress is Sybil Yates. Behind her is Adrian Stevens from England. The man with the beard is James Strachey, Freud's editor. In front of him is Adrian Stevens. The bearded gentleman is Dr. Jekylls from Vienna, who later settled in New York. Behind the lady in the dark coat is Dr. and Mrs. Pfeiffer from Budapest. You see next Mrs. Lewis. And here is a better shot of Dr. and Mrs. Pfeiffer. He was later killed by the Nazis. On the right is Dr. Rudolf Löwenstein from Paris and Dr. Hans Sachs from Berlin. The tall colleague is Dr. George Daniels from New York. You all know him. He's from the Columbia Group. Dr. Johann Van Ophuysen is on the extreme right. In the dark suit is Dr. Johan van Ophuysen and Dr. Edward Glover with a pipe. Dr. Van Ophuysen was the secretary of the International Psychiatric Association at this time. Next we see Dr. Hermann Nunberg from Vienna and Marjorie Franklin. Barbara Lowe is behind Dr. Nunberg. Here is a better shot of Dr. Nunberg and Barbara Lowe is talking with Marjorie Franklin behind her. Next you see Melanie Klein with Dr. Karen Hornay, both from Berlin, and Dr. Derry from Los Angeles. Here is Dr. and Mrs. Jackals from Vienna. Dr. Ernst Simmel is turning around. Dr. and Mrs. Nunberg, and then I come into the picture with my usual cigar. Here you see Dr. and Mrs. Nunberg again, lighting up. They were newly wet and on their honeymoon. The, the group sat down for an official photograph after lunch and you will see some new faces. In the center are Dr. Karen Hornay, Dr. Max Eitingen from Berlin. Max Eitingen was elected president of the International Psychiatric Association at this meeting. Dr. and Mrs. Coria are there. He was the first analyst in Boston. And in the middle you see Dr. Hans Sachs. Here are Dr. and Mrs. Stern from New York and Dr. and Mrs. Coria behind them. Here you see Dr. Sweeney and his wife, Dr. Lillian Powers. This is Dr. Lieberman from Berlin with a camera. You see here Marianne Chris and Sybil Yates, who is the blonde lady on the right, and Eddie Jacobson. Dr. Jacobson is a little one smiling on the center right. You see here Dr. A. Brill with a cane. Next, you see Dr. Sandor Ferenczi.
from left to right. Mrs. Rado, Dr. Rado, Gregory Zilborg, A. April, Franz Alexander, and Dr. Hollosh. I am on the left with Dr. Richman. You see Dr. and Mrs. Feigenbaum from New York. Dr. Feigenbaum is in the dark suit. He was the founder of the Psychoanalytic Quarterly. Next we see Dr. and Mrs. Pfeiffer and Dr. Dimanche. Here you see Dr. Jekylls with Helena Deutsch and Mrs. Rado. Dr. Sweeney is next with the dark suit and the white hat. In this group you see Mrs. Rado in the white dress with Dr. Jekylls, Helena Deutsch, Mrs. Feigenbaum and Lillian Powers. In the middle you see Anna Freud in the black beret. Mrs. Derry from Los Angeles. Dr. Obendorf is in the center. Anna Freud and Dr. Sachs are on his left. Dr. Smith, Eli Jellif is in the straw hat. Here is Mrs. Rado, Dr. Rado, Helena Deutsch and me. Next, Drs. Rado, Eitingon, Silberg and Anna Freud. Dr. Johann von Opheisen in the dark suit speaks with Anna Freud. There you see Gregory Silberg and Max Eitingon. There is Dr. Hollos with his hands in his pocket, and Dr. Sachs and Dr. Ferenczi. Dr. Otto Fennickel stands on the right with his hand in his pocket. Dr. Jacobson is there, and nearby is Dr. Sweeney and Dr. Karen Hornay. The man in the gray suit is Dr. Stern from New York. Next you see Dr. Paul Feden and Dr. Karen Hornay. Here we see Mrs. Rado, Dr. Jackals. You see the two women, Edith Jacobson and Susan Derry from Los Angeles. Dr. Van Ophuizen is on the left. A single good picture of Mrs. Derry from Los Angeles. Dr. Horus is on the left. He was a close associate of Dr. Shando Ferenczi. Dr. Hans Sachs is in the center here. Dr. Clarence Omdorf smiles for the camera. Behind him stands Dr. Stern. The three together are Dr. Stern, Rado and Sweeney. And then Dr. Horus and Mrs. Feigenbaum. Dr. Feigenbaum is to the left and Dr. Hollosh looks directly into the camera. The bald-headed man with the mustache is Dr. Max Eintingon, the president of the International Desir, and Dr. Daly from India is behind him. You see, first time Dr. Smells from Cincinnati is in his dark suit and Dr. Hollosh is on his right and Dr. Van Ophuizen on his left. In the foreground is Dr. Bohn and his wife from Berlin. Behind Mrs. Bohn is Melita Schmiederberg, Melanie Klein's daughter. Dr. E. Brill is to the left. Melita Schmiederberg is in the center. Dr. Dimanche from Paris is on the left and behind her is Dr. Daly. Dr. Otto Feinickel stands on the right. Here you see Dr. Daly again. Behind him are Dr. Brill and Dr. Ferenczi. The tall colleague in the front is Dr. Sobel and Dr. Sweeney is to his right. Some members of the Congress went on an excursion to Salisbury and Stonehenge later where we visited the cathedral and the Roman fortifications. On the main street of Salisbury we see Dr. and Mrs. Nunberg acting up for the camera. 
Dr. Fennecker is in the center. Here again we see Dr. Clarence Umdorf. And here is a nice shot of Melita Schmiederberg. And Dr. Reed of Cincinnati. Dr. and Mrs. Nudmeg again, and behind them Dr. de Monche. Uh, next to him, uh, Dr. Lumestein. We all had lunch in one of those lovely little inns that are found all over England. After lunch we visited the cathedral and strolled in the cathedral gardens. Here you see Bert Lewin and Mrs. Rado strolling. Do you see also the last shot of me? <laughs> I want to peer again. <laughs> Here is our group at the Salisbury Plain, where we sat and listened to Dr. Ernst Jones, who told us the history of the Roman occupation. This is the end of my film about the Congress. But before ending, I thought it might be interesting to show a few photographs taken by Dr. Freud in his family circle. I did not take that photograph of Freud because nobody could see him that summer after the Congress because he was not well. I told Ferenczi, whom I was supposed to accompany to Vienna and to see Freud, that I'm so disappointed that I didn't see him and I couldn't visit him. And I also wanted to include him in the picture that he wasn't at the Congress, he was the only one, the most important, who I would like to have connected with that important Congress where you saw really all the early pioneers from the beginning, you know, those who stuck and were loyal to Freud and carried on the development of psychoanalysis. So Ferenczi surprised me in Budapest before I returned to America after the Congress and, and he gave that to me as a present. I don't know how or where he got that film of Freud. I didn't ask, but before I left Budapest that summer, the end of August 1929, coming back to America, he presented me with that film, which you are seeing now, of Freud in his family environment. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.